BioHarvest uses its botanical synthesis technology to create proprietary plant-based molecules for its direct consumer nutraceuticals business and for the pharmaceutical and biotechnology industries through its contract development and production organization. The company just announced its 2024 financial results, which saw revenues grow 99% to $25.2 million with expanding margins. And CEO Ilan Sobel is here to talk about the results and an outlook on 2025. I'm Martin Gagel with Market Radius Research. Please remember, this is neither a recommendation nor investment advice. We're here to learn about the company. Ilan, great to have you back. Congrats on a very solid quarter. Thank you, Martin. Uh, it's uh, great to be on your show again. And yeah, we're very um, we're very proud of the results that we delivered for 2024. Uh, it was a pivotal year for the company, you know, literally doubling the revenue. And it's important um, to understand this is the third year in a row that we pretty much doubled the revenue of the company. And with the increased scale in the business, the improvement of a thousand basis points on margins, as we look to the path to EBITDA profitability, targeting EBITDA profitability in the second half of this year, you know, 2025 is going to be another pivotal year for the company, um, given the, the focus on continuing to grow top line revenue to improve um, as a result of the scaling of the business and efficiencies the gross profit of the business, and then you know being able to further double down on the operating leverage that we have and we've demonstrated in 2024 to really glide the company to that EBITDA profitability position uh, in the second half of the year. Um, so yeah, um, it, it was uh, an important year to memorialize, but we're already in end of March, April 2 today, First quarter is behind us, and we're focused now on the next nine months of growth for the business. All right. Well, just on last year, I was really impressed that, A, you were able to expand your gross margin percentage while growing so fast. And even like your sales and marketing as a percentage became a smaller percentage of revenue. So that's the the percent, the absolute number is growing, but the percentage is declining. But you actually were able to reduce your overall GNA, which for a, a high growth company, uh, that, that's pretty uh, remarkable. So any sort of details or should we expect that kind of similar margin expansion this year and, and sort of your, your operating expenses, any sort of maybe not an uh, uh, exact guidance, but general kind of outlook? Uh I'll keep it at a conceptual level. Okay. Um, my my father always <clears throat> would say to me, past performance predicts future performance. Okay. So when you look at exactly, you know, we expect in 2025, we've we've given guidance for the first quarter, yeah. um, seven point seven point eight million, and um, our shareholder partners and investors out there should expect another year of stellar growth from from us as we continue to compound that growth quarter on quarter um, through the year. Similarly, as we're scaling the business, we're maniacally focused on driving gross profit margins north of 60% and closer to 65% as we move quarter on quarter. It's a major focus of our operating team with a number of very, very specific activities that we've outlined in order to do that. Similarly, on the demand creation side of the business, we're very, very focused of driving that demand more efficiently. And we, we work really hard at that. We have an amazing ability to measure the effectiveness of everything we do to drive demand. All of our advertising, we're measuring the effectiveness of every single, pretty much every single TV spot that goes on air, making sure we get the right return on advertising spend. And so ultimately you saw, as you described earlier, the significant uh, reduction in the percentage of, um, of revenue that sales and marketing comprises. And, you know, and as we move to the fourth quarter, we saw it around about 47% of revenue. And obviously the target is to continue to push that down to below 40% by the end of the year. And then, yes, on the company has significant um, operating leverage. And, um, you know, from a staffing perspective, from a, from a resources perspective, um, you know, what's interesting when you look at... Um, the fourth quarter of last year where 
we actually reduced our GNA by 4%. That included a number of costs related to actually uplisting the company to NASDAQ. So it just really you know, demonstrates the operating leverage that we have. Um, that those costs will no longer be in our base. Um, and um, you know, we, we expect to see continued um, you know, prudent focus on keeping costs down from a GNA perspective. Um, and uh, in order to really drive that EBIT, uh, overall EBITDA profitability for the business, which we're very, very focused on targeting. Helping your uh, sales and marketing is the fact that a lot of your business is done through a subscription model. So you, you, you buy once and every three months you get a new package delivered so you don't have to keep finding new customer, new customers sort of get layered on top of the existing customers. Can you just talk about uh, your cost of acquisition or how sticky or, or your retention rate of uh, your, your subscribers? Yeah. So, you know, our business is a, is, a, is a very, very focused subscription business. And, um, you know, if you look at our vineyard.com revenue, which is about 80% of our revenue, at least 90% of that revenue is subscriptions. We love subscriptions, oh. right? Yeah. It, it's significant. I, I I don't, I haven't found another company out there that has such a high percentage of the revenue that comes through their website being subscription revenue. All right. Um, and, you know, we've been able to do that because of our overall pricing strategy, but more importantly, because of the power of the compounds that our botanical synthesis technology is able to produce, in this case, our vinea compound, red grape cell compound. And, you know, you talked about stickiness. When people take a product that they understand it's, it's backed with clinical, clinical trials, um, they see a 4.8 out of 5 verified rating for more than now 8,500 verified um, consumers out there, um, they have the confidence when they lean in, also understanding there's a 90 day money back guarantee and we give money back, you know, no questions asked. We don't make it difficult for our customers. Like it's no question asked, money back guarantee. You're not happy, you get your money back. So so people there, therefore they have the the confidence to be able to lean, you know, lean in and 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 opt in to a subscription package. And that's why we're able to generate more than 90% of our of our revenue coming from subscriptions. Now, because the compound delivers, you you obviously are able to get that stickiness. And we believe we have, you know, I would say industry leading low levels of churn rates all driven based on the compound and the impact that in this case, our red grape cell compound has as far as people's overall health and wellness, imp increasing overall arterial dilation, more blood flow, more physical energy, more mental alertness. We change people's lives. Um, and, um, and ultimately, um, that really allows us to get that compounding effect as we start to, you know, each time we're adding more and more customers, we're adding significantly more customers than we're losing. And therefore, you get the compounding effect month after month. In terms of growth, um, can you just, what new markets, be it new geographic markets and new mo product markets? Because you've launched some coffee infused uh, vinea products. And then as well, you're getting towards some brand new non vinea based uh, products as well. Just quickly, what kind of yeah. new products are, are hitting the market this year? For 2025, the, the, the focus is really on doubling down again in the US of A. The market is so big, it's a $56 billion category. We play in probably $15 billion of space. So they're literally the opportunities to drive you know, growth in the, in the US and the benefits of focusing is very, very important. So we haven't needed as a company to look at other markets to, to go out to go and, and waste resources and penetrate in. Even though, for example, we do have um, registration in Canada we focused on the U.S. market. So that means, Martin, continued focus in the U.S. Our core business, which is our capsule business, right, which I'm holding up here, um, is growing at, at, at roughly 90%. So it's really important to have high growth in your core business. That's a healthy business. And we'll continue to double down on our core business as we expand into new channels. Um, you know, we, we, we literally, we've, we've pretty much just dipped our toes in the water. Uh, as I like to say. And then, yes, you know, we're going to layer on incremental innovation. Our existing innovation is working really well for us. 
our coffee business, which is in K-Cup um, compatible pods, where we have a regular uh, Vinia um, energy coffee, as well as our decaf version is, has done remarkably well since we've launched in 2023. We've sold now more than $2.3 million of revenue um, directly to consumers. Again, okay? we're a direct to consumer business. Um, and um, again, we've received fantastic uh, feedback on, on our overall product, really just emphasizing how our, what we call our superior science, superior efficacy and superior taste strategy is working. When we go into these major multi-billion dollar categories, we disrupt them by bringing superior health and wellness credentials for consumers who are yearning for these better for you products in these categories and are actually willing to pay more. So that's really been the strategy. We've we've really demonstrated the effectiveness of that strategy and success with our with our coffee business. We launched Martin um, Teas at the end of last year, and we've seen a um, similar response from consumers regarding the overall taste, the efficacy. Again, delivering on that superior science, superior efficacy, and superior taste. And when I say superior taste, every one of the products that leaves BioHarvest before it's launched into the market. Just given my background and 18 years in fast moving consumer goods, we test everything, quantitative, blind taste testing to make sure that our products, which each have the equivalent of one capsule of vinea inside. So in each one of our K-Cup compatible pods, we have equivalent of one capsule of vinea inside together with, you know, the best um, coffee um, overall uh, pr uh, proposition roasted in Seattle. Everything is taste tested and making sure that we beat, if not worst case, parity to market leaders. Um, and we've seen that together with our tea business, where similarly across our flavors, we quantitative tested uh, our, our flavors and they did remarkably well versus market leaders. And that's why we're seeing all of this success. So we'll continue to double down on those products. We will also be launching in the coffee space moving from K-Cup compatible into Nespresso. So we'll be actually launching the first ever superfood in a Nespresso compatible pod that'll be coming to the market in May. Um, K-Cups today are accessing about 40 million K-Cup compatible machines out there. There's probably now between anywhere between 12, 15 million Nespresso compatible machines uh, out there that we're now gonna be accessing in American homes and offices. And then on the tea business, we'll be moving from our overall tea sachets, which we launched in initially, into K-Cup compatible to access those 40 million machines, um, K-Cup compatible machines with an English breakfast tea and a matcha green tea together with Vinia um, targeting those 40 million homes. So this is what we're going to see over the, next, um, over the next quarter. And in addition, on top of this, we're bringing to the marketplace a chew product which we call um, which we call our Vinia Daily 2X Formula Chew, which is targeting a slightly younger consumer base. We're targeting super active people, including athletes. And with the um, with the actual Chew product, where um, we have two times the amount of Vinia in each Chew, so we have the equivalent of two capsules inside each Vinia Chew. We know traditionally for the athletes out there. Those athletes need a, you know, a little bit of higher dosage because they're you know, obviously operating at uh, you know elite levels of fitness to be able to get that vinia advantage. And this product is also going to be informed sport certified, which is really important so that we can comfortably provide our products to major um, sporting teams, sporting associations um, who really want to make sure that the quality is there. And, and obviously with informed sports, your product is certified that there are no banned substances for athletes, which is really important. So there's a lot of really good innovation, which is uh, Martin, which is being layered on top of a already high growth core business that we will continue to grow at very high double digit growth rates. And then layering that on with the additional innovation, we, we really, believe that 2025 will be another very strong year of revenue growth for the company and ensuring that we translate that revenue growth into improved gross profit margins, continue to drive efficiency on the sales and marketing level and operating leverage to land the plane on that EBITDA profitability 
uh, during the second half of this year? The fully new product, the olive uh, 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 oil based product, when are we? When should that launch be roughly expected? Our olive aboscicide uh, cells are being planned for 2026. As, okay. uh, as I've shared in previous discussions over the last few days, um, all the development work has been done on our olive aboscicide cells. And these, uh, what's critical for us now over the course of the next you know, 12 months is to finalize all the regulatory approvals that we need to work through for markets like here in Israel and in obviously the US. Uh, and also we, whilst we had very, very strong initial in vitro trial results, what's important for us now is to move from in vitro into actual human clinical trials. And we're busy now working through what that path looks like for the next, let's call it 12 months. All right. Okay. And then you've got the other side of the business, which is in a little earlier stage than the direct consumer side, your CDMO business. Uh, you announced obviously the big deal with Tate and Lyle, I believe in Q4. Uh, how is that coming along and what other uh, CDMO type business could we maybe expect for this year? So from a CDMO perspective, We've uh, we have continued momentum. Obviously, the Tate and Lyle deal was was a was a very foundational milestone for the company, being recognised by Tate and Lyle for the power of our botanical synthesis technology and the opportunity to really bring to the market the next generation of non nutritive natural sweeteners, where which obviously is, is critical as people look for you know classical sugar, healthier options to sugar replacement out there. Um, so it's a, it's a big bet from Tate and Lyle. It's a big bet for us, and and we've we've actually started already to do a lot of work in that area. The the pipeline that we have of opportunities in the CDMO is significant, and um, our investor partners should start to see a number of uh, catalysts coming to the market in the near term as we work through that pipeline, um, and we'll see continued momentum working through the CDMO as far as new deals. As well as exist uh, as well as existing deals, importantly moving them from stage one to stage two, which is really demonstrates the progress that we're making, going from plant to the critical cell bank creation work, and then starting to move into the process of um, actually taking those cells and growing those cells in bioreactors. All right, uh, we covered a lot. Um, uh, any final comments or anything we missed that you want to highlight before we wrap it up here? Uh, I think for our investor partners, you know, as I said, past performance predicts future performance. Um, we've really, you know, you know, delivered everything that we promised that we would deliver as it relates to, um, you know, revenue targets and execution in the marketplace. And, you know, we believe 2025, we will continue to build on the capabilities that we've already built a very solid foundation and continue to deliver on the commitment to driving the revenue momentum and translating that revenue momentum into the appropriate financial results uh, that are important for our shareholder partners. But importantly, Martin, doing this by developing life-changing molecules, compounds from plants that are gonna change people's overall health and wellness, which is really the core North Star of the company on how we do this and really impact the lives of, of millions, tens of millions, over time, hundreds of millions of consumers and really ensure that we deliver that human utility value of really improving the overall health and wellness. And if we drive human utility value every single day, the shareholder value creation will come very, very quickly. All right, Alan, thank you very much. Congrats on, on a, a great year and quarter and looking forward to seeing how uh, 2025 shakes out. Thank you, Martin.